Happy Halloween and welcome to Dyson Easy's Halloween Special. This is what I have to work with. What, you said Halloween Special, I thought I'd make, a, make an effort. I meant the theming of the game, but uh, outfits, alright. Kind of hoping the thrill of might make me uh, play better. Sure. I'm You've two got... for two for two at the moment. Uh, so, yes, you know. yes, 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 this is true. This yeah. is true, shameful for me. <laughs> yeah. So we wanted to play something thematic. Absolutely. And uh, you are going to be playing as the undead. Hence. And I will be I will be playing the part of the heroic Bretonians yep. or Basilians as they are, I think, in Kings of War. I'm yeah. really not into their fluff. Um, but this is old school Bretonia um, okay. that we've managed to get the, the, the miniatures for. And uh, this is going to be a setting where I'm going to be surrounded as the undead pour into my village. And hopefully the noble knights will ride to the rescue of the poor peasants and probably regret afterwards. Yeah. I'm hoping we'll be dancing throughout. <laughs> We would put the Thriller soundtrack on, but I'm pretty sure YouTube would take that down straight away. I think so. Yep. Should we get stuck in? Let's do it. Let's go. Okay, here's the village with the defenders. We have some units of men-at-arms, some angry townsfolk, uh, people who vaguely know how to use a bow and an enchantress to hold the fort. And over here we've got the heroic knights and pegasus knights riding in to save them from the undead hordes approaching from every side and uh yeah i'm hoping to not lose to you again paul but we shall <laughs> see how that pans out fingers crossed the undead are not my preferred army Fair. And this is our target here. It is going to be the centre of the village and it's going to be unit strength. So the bigger the units that are within the range of that at the end of the game will claim victory. So I'm hoping to hold you at bay. Excellent. Onward to the scary village. <laughs> All right. So the defence has been started with the Enchantress hurling a lightning bolt at the werewolves slash wolves, which did absolutely nothing. I think it's very thematic, though. Yes. The um, villagers have taken up position behind this hedge. The fast moving cavalry elements are going to try and tie up these guys coming in over the bridge area and the heavy hitters are going to try and face down this skeleton horde over here while the men at arms try not to die. And then finally to go with the theme and stay on trend my vampire who is the commander is standing menacingly in the woods calling to all of the ladies in the village in the way that only vampire men can. Hopefully he's not a sparkly vampire though. We don't do that here. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, so my turn one. My undead have creeped out of the forest and are menacing some men at arms here. And I've left the bats on the bridge because, you know, who doesn't want to stop cavalry with a bunch of flying rodents? <laughs> <laughs> Over this side, the necromancer has shoved some of the skeleton warriors forwards and the uh, black cavalry have gone into the other side to come and back up the wolves against the enchantress. <laughs> Down here, my uh, Blood Knights, which are the elite of the elite in my army, are trying to mince their way through a gigantic horde of peasants. And I think that's going to take me a couple of turns. And to make sure it's all thematic and scary, my vampire, who is my commander, is just going to stand menacingly in the woods. Right, let's strike back against these Blood Knights who have already impaled nine of the townsfolk. Um, I get 25 attacks because I am a horde, because there are just so many of them. But as you'll see, most of them are armed with things like pots, pans and pitchforks. So let's see how this pans out. Fives here. So we are blood knights, we're fairly horrendously tough, and our defences are five up. All five, not so bad. Excellent, take three. I will take it. Right, my turn two is done, and the fast-moving elements have dashed up this side of the board. Uh, the bats may hold them for a while, I'm hoping to slam into the flank here, while the men-at-arms hold this gap. And over here it's gotten messy, these guys are facing down the werewolves, and the villagers put some pain on these vampire knights, uh, the blood knights, but I don't know how long that's going to last before Cheeky Graveguard back up up there gets involved. Absolutely bogged down by these skeletons. I don't think I'm going to get anywhere through them because they've got this phalanx rule as well, which negates cavalry charges. And uh, yeah, it's going to get real tricky. Hopefully, they can fight their way out of it, but I don't have much hope. So, Blood Knights are having another go at the horde of villagers. Uh, they have a grand total of 20 attacks. So many dice. 
but they are fighting against a horde. So, you know, yeah. it's a battle of attrition here. I need three ups. Oof. Give me a minute. Strength. Okay, yeah. Well, I didn't take you a minute to pick those dice up. And how many sixes? <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's my sixes. For Good me. lordy. So they now have 20 damage marked on them, Paul, and I've got a nerve of 20 and 22, so uh, double one and I stay. Excellent. It's been done before. Six, 26. Very, very dead. Oh, and of course your vampire unit heals itself. I do indeed, because of the leech life, look, life leech even. Brutal. Life leech too. So turn three, turn two runs Turn two already. Turn two. So my bats are still holding the bridge, but I don't think that's going to be for very long. Over here, my spirit host and some skeletons are making their way slowly into the village, which is a lot less defended now, because that <laughs> horde of peasants has been utterly wiped out by the blood knights, which Just was trampled. Fairly intense. Over here, things are getting a little bit meaty. My werewolves are getting stuck into the men at arms, and then there's the skeletons that are locked in combat with the knights. So this fight. <laughs> so we roll into turn three. Okay, I have hope for this charge on the bridge because I am only fighting a swarm of bats, but let's see, because these are my light cavalry. Still get a bunch of attacks at 16 each. And hitting on fours. So I'm needing a three up because I have thunderous charge, which helps me out on the wound roll. That'll do. That's seven. Damn, Richard, check out those sixes. I know, I'm trying to turn it to you. <laughs> Yet yeah, so unsurprisingly, these guys run roughshod through the bats. Uh, I had to back off here a little bit so that I didn't get pinned between getting flanked by a unit of skeletons if I charged and getting charged by these guys through the village as they are running amok. I did do some damage to them with the archery fire um, and a little bit of lightning bolt action from my wizard. And this fight seems to be drawing on. However... This one may start to swing. The, the Phalanx rule didn't come into play on the second turn and the Knights managed to actually put some damage on these guys. So if they can clear up over here and swing around, might be able to save part of the village. So my werewolves are still locked in combat. They're going to continue to bite, jump, bark, lick and do everything <laughs> the dogs normally do. I need them to roll a three or more to hurt. So let's see what happens. Nine dice, three up. I'm needing threes, or five wounds, and you life leech how much of your health back? I don't know, life leech one. Okay, just the one, not too bad. Right, spookiest time of the year, Paul. Better get the ghosts in there, what are you gonna do? Who are you gonna call, yeah. <laughs> so, I need to roll four or higher. Let's have a look, so not great, not great at all. Yep. Needing fours. Oh dear! Not very spooky at all. Just the one. That wasn't too bloody. Um, however, this fight here, on the corner of the inn, what can these peasants do? They haven't gone for a drink. Yeah, the Screaming Banshee's not open at this time of night. <laughs> I feel it's a bit of overkill. I'm rolling 20 dice on these poor archers. So let's see what happens. That's a lot of threes or more, Paul. That one went out the box, and that is a hell of a lot of wounds. All right, I put 11 wounds on them. Turn three for the undead, bit of a mixed bag. The spooky boys over here, kind of locked in combat with the men at arms. Who are you gonna call on Halloween? Men at arms, it seems. The vampire knights chomped through another <laughs> unit and are looking greedily at this group of archers, though I'm kind of hoping those Pegasus knights will swoop in in a minute. And have a bit of something to say. Over here these two are still locked in combat but I have a horrible feeling the undead skeletons are gonna dissolve into dust very shortly and here most undead like the uh, skeletons ran away from the Baron but I'm kind of hoping that there'll be a bit of a, a Baron vampire showdown maybe in the final act. Again a little bit of a knife edge as Kings of War always is. Just about to start Richard's third turn so let's see what happens. All right, the archers got the hell out of the way so that the Pegasus Knights could charge on through against the vampires. So let's see what they can do. Nine attacks, hit on threes. Fours now, three, four, I'll take that. Excellent. 
So the Blood Knights, the Vampire Knights have been attacked. They are currently on eight wounds. They need 15 to waver and become useless or 17 to be routed and removed. That is less than both. Absolutely. All right, so I'm minus one to hit here because you've got Phalanx again and I lose my Thunderous Charge. But I'm still hoping to put a dent in these guys. Not threes. Right, so it actually was fours, not threes. And then now these are going to need fours again. That is going to be four wounds on the skeletons. I get to reroll this one with Vicious. So five in total. Happy days. That was quite impressive, yeah. Need a big roll for the nerve here. No, they don't waver or route, so they're just staying there. Right, penultimate turn for me. The Baron has whipped around here to give these guys a really hard time. They just don't seem to be going anywhere. Finally finished off the skeleton, so hopefully one final heroic charge from the knights in my fifth turn might secure the bridge. Well, the fall, I suppose. The bridge is over here. <laughs> On which note, the cavalry didn't quite get it done here. The men-at-arms could not hurt these ghosts. Their damage on a six-up only. And the Pegasus knights bumped off the... Uh, wall of the uh, vampire uh, armor and i feel in their turn is probably gonna start making a mess of these guys so kind of in the balance but this is the point we care about so right now it's looking good for me i think yeah i agree but there's a lot of stuff out there <laughs> the necromancer who knows no fear well the necromancer decided to charge into the side of the horses because Obviously, he spent ages painting all his skeletons, yeah. and they have uh, mercilessly just cut them down. They were edge highlighted and everything. So let's see, ten attacks. We are looking for a five or up. There we go. Two. Two. Okay, he's not the threat I thought he might be. That's not bad, you know. You know. One damage on One them. Damage, I it? mean... Do you want to roll to see if you waver them with an insanely lucky roll? Let's see, if I get double six. Double six, they are wavered, which will ruin my day. If, okay, if I get double six, um, I'll do the next episode in my pants. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're back with the Blood Knights, who are single-handedly holding the objective at the moment. I've got 20 attacks on the uh, beautiful, beautiful Pegasus, so let's see what happens. Hitting on a three or higher. So, oh, that's a lot of damage. Oh, gosh. Eight. Right. Let's see how they fare. Do you want to roll their uh, nerve now? Uh, it's an eight. An eight. Sixteen. Oh, they are routed. Bye. <laughs> so, at the end of turn four, things are really in the balance as per normal. The skeletons are holding the bridge just... Uh, against the horses who are quite lightly armed so have not done as much damage as Richard had hoped. Speaking of which, around the corner here the ghosts are again holding their own against the men-at-arms but boy those men-at-arms are tough they are an immovable object. It'll be no surprise to anybody blood knights have <laughs> rinsed the pegasus knights again and are holding that objective and pretty much laughing and being vampire at anybody that comes near. It's winning this game for you, aren't they? Absolutely, absolutely. So we have got more werewolves on the men at arms, and that's a little bit of a stalemate there, but the, I think the werewolves have got the luck at the moment, only having one wound. I stupidly, or heroically, depending on how you look <laughs> at it, have charged my necromancer into a group of horsemen, and he did absolutely nothing, but, you know, I made me feel better. And as we come into the final round, and I can count now, this is round number five. Yeah, yes, good. It looks as though we're going to have a showdown between the Baron and the Vampire Lord himself. So we are pretty much rolling for the game. The only unit that can score points is the Blood Knights in the middle of the village. And they've just been hit by a double whammy of arrows and lightning bolts. And this is the roll to see if they rout or if they waver. Ooh, a 19. 19. So the Blood Knights Regiment, that's the wrong one, they waver on 15 and they are routed on Ooh, 17. They're gone. They are gone. Bye bye boys. Let's do this combat then Paul. This is the heroic duel between mighty heroes and villains. I've got five attacks. So five let's attacks. see what I can do here. Uh, that gives me four hits. 
Okay, five up, but I've got crushing strength, so that's going to be fours. Uh, that's a cocked dice quite clearly in the corner. Uh, two on the vampire, that's not going to mean much at all. Okay, so the cavalry did finally manage to break the skeletons, which was awesome. Very little happening over here. These guys cleared the centre of the um, Blood Knights with a little bit of lightning and arrows. And after the men-at-arms heroically held the werewolves at the crossing forever, the knights came thundering across and crushed them under their hooves. And in our heroic duel, two strikes against the vampire. But Paul informs me he has special one-on-one uh, -on -one rules. So I'm uh, looking forward to that in Paul's turn. But uh, overall, I seem to have mainly grabbed the centre. It depends what Paul can do with his last push of units. And then, of course, the moral victory here. So turn five for me was not particularly exciting. I've moved a couple of units a little bit closer to the objective, but I don't think it's going to score much in the long run. The ghosts have stayed where they are. There's not much else I can do. I'm going to have a big fight at the end between the heroes. You know, in my head, maybe it's Sean Connery versus Christian Bale. I don't know. Maybe uh, some of peripheral looking people. Vincent Price, maybe, as it's Halloween. So here we go. It is 14 attacks because of duelist, and I'm rolling three or higher to hit. Very simple. Oh, that guy's done an absolute number on my gem roll. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oof. Right, let's roll to see if this guy's going to flee. What am I rolling for? Uh, I've got 15 to route. No, he holds, but only just. <laughs> no, that's... That's seven. Plus Bad maths eight. on my part. He is going to flee, but he has inspiring, so you do need to re-roll his route roll, Paul. He definitely <laughs> runs and or gets cut down. Bye. And after the heroic uh, duel where he got cut down, he has bought just enough time for the rest of the forces to rally. And these archers here are winning the game by being the only counting unit within 12 of the centre of the board. And thus, these fine folks have saved the village. Obviously, everybody else helped. Well, that was a thriller. <sighs> yes. I didn't lose. No, that's, that's your first 10 mil victory. But it, it was hard won. It was very hard won. That was uh, quite the brutal battle. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm going to call it now. You, you, you want to know man of the match. I'm giving it to the men at arms because they didn't actually do anything, <laughs> but they also didn't die, Yeah. which in both instances was super important for basically blockading your forces at the, the two crossing points and the entry to the village. I completely agree. Your, your men at arms absolutely stopped me in my tracks on, on two occasions. And I think really they gave the rest of your army enough time to get around. Yeah. For me... It's got to be the Blood Knights, although they yes. kind of ingloriously <laughs> died at the end to a bunch of archers. But they were absolutely brutal. Yeah, and it's that getting wounds back when they when they hit when they hit stuff, and uh, they're just super lethal on the charge, which is what they should be. Yeah. So an all round flavour win there. And uh, yes, outfit aside, happy Halloween, people. Happy Halloween. Cheers. Yeah.